And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, today's we're going to start dealing with this Niobium volcano. This is uh, this has been haunting my nightmares. This thing gives out 316 kilos of boiling hot Niobium every second for 70 seconds. This is just going to be a monster to deal with. But what I want to do is take all this boiling Niobium and kind of do what we're doing with the magma. Throw it into a rocket. Of course, it'll be into our little secret rocket over here under the secret rocket silo. Unfortunately, we need to put a liquid import on that and uh, there's nowhere to fit it. We can't put it on the right side because that's covered in magma and we can't put it on the left side because, well, there's a volcano in the way. So we're going to have to move the entire thing down at least two tiles. That's that's going to be messy. But in the meantime, before we start up that, we're just currently unloading uh, the last load of magma we brought back. Once that's unloaded, we're going to send back our entire crew. We're going to send back eight builders and our little, uh, our poor captive guy in here. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, you know what? We'll let you out for a bit. Why not? We'll just, uh, we'll enable this and let you go get... Go get a snack. However, while we are waiting for the for the rocket to unload and our crews to get ready, I thought we'd come down here and deal with this cool steam vent tamer. This should be a quick one. All we want to do is take all the water that's coming out of this and dump it, well, into the water that's surrounding it. I'm thinking we can do something pretty quick and simple, considering its location and uh, what it's currently surrounded by. Quick st cool steam vent tamer should be uh, very achievable. This should be, well, simply what it looks like. We're going to take our all design, which actually depends on active cooling. This one over here, we run an aqua tuner, we get some super coolant going through it, or what does this run on? This is actually on polluted water. It provides some cooling and we use the cooling to steam it, cool down the steam just enough to turn it into water. But over here, we're just, well, it's surrounded already in some water. And that water, yeah, who cares if it gets a little bit of heat dumped into it? It's, uh, it's got a little bit of thermal capacity going on. It should be able to handle quite a bit. I mean, in theory, if it went long enough, it might boil all the water, but... No, no it's not. It's just, just too much water. So we're going to put in a liquid pump here to pump out water and then we're just going to drain the water down to a certain level. That will mean we'll need to reinforce the outside of it to make sure none of the water in the outside breaks in, but shouldn't be too difficult. How, how do you entomb yourself inside a door? It's a door. Open the door. Just, you're hungry? Yep, if you're hungry you would have figured out how to open the door you're literally stuck inside. Oh my god. Okay, we'll open the door for you and see if that lets you out. Meep, meep. Open it for them and see. Yep, they figured it out. They figured it out. <laughs> ah, dupes. This here is our resulting design, which is immediately starting to break. Uh, we're going to put those there. Uh, the plan is rather simple. We just have this giant heatsink strapped around the top of it and all of these diamond temperature shift plates in the middle. And the theory is, is if we strip out the top two layers of water, any steam that comes in here will just touch the temperature shift plates and the metal plates around it, and all the surrounding water will absorb the heat, turning the steam into water, which we then pump out. Unfortunately, it's in a very, very pressurized environment, so that means we have to double layer things, or maybe even triple layer in places, to stop pressure damage. Did not anticipate the pressure damage on the bottom. Uh, yeah, you know what, we'll, we'll cover that one there as well. So we'll uh, put in a few tiles there. The door there can't take pressure damage at all. It's one of the magic of doors. We could have used doors all the way around, but it doesn't look nearly as cool. And finished. We have managed to strip out enough of the water. It's not quite down to the target level we had, but this is erupting. Oh, it's actually a 10.8 kilo steam vent. That's a lot. But it erupts. It hits the temperature shift plates. The temperature shift plates move all the uh, the heat out of it. Well, move enough heat out of it that it turns into water, and then it just drops down. You can actually see it there. There's a little blob of 10 kilos of water falling down. It falls down here and gets picked up by the water pump. So pressure in here goes above 850 kilos. Water pump activates and pumps the water out, and all of the heat is sort of getting dumped into the surrounding environment. Now, normally I wouldn't do this sort of thing. This is just no. It's not sustainable long term. But when you have this much water. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Also, we do have ways to dump uh, colder water through here. There's uh, pipes here coming through with cold water, so we can reroute them around here if we want to. There's other things we can do in case this ever becomes a problem. But realistically, I don't think we're ever going to have any issues with this. And that is that uh, finished. Now it's time to deal with Tostibo. Uh, oh, over here, I want to do one thing. I want to move this ladder system out of the way. The problem we were having with this ladder system is it was causing duplicates to go into the wrong space for our modules. That's why we have these doors here. Now there's the crew button, but the moment we hit the crew button, that just locks the crews inside. Uh, you know what? We can get... You know what? That should be fine. Can they actually get up that ladder system? 
I want to basically still have a way for the astronaut in here to get out. Our first step towards uh, moving this entire rocket silo down a few tiles is getting this magma out of the way. So to move that out of the way, we're going to need pitcher pumps and we're going to need somewhere to dump it. So I'm thinking we either put it over here or over here. But first off, we need to get this stuff all out of the way. I've been moving this stuff around, but I think we'll make a more permanent storage facility right there. In fact, if we put a insulated tile beneath this, uh, no, no, not igneous rock. We'll go with obsidian, more plentiful. I know there's a bit light there, but we're going to remove that at some point. We're going to just have this as a sort of a, a catch-all storage facility for all of our gunk until we're ready to do something more permanent. And then we can drill in under here and put in some uh, bottle emptiers to drop all the magma we're going to collect. This just frees up this area because at some point we're going to have that, that magma down as well. It's a slow and steady plan to just drain all the magma out of the core of this planet. With all that stuff out of the way, it's time to get on with the next part of the plan. Next part of the plan is we're going to seal this section off so we can get back down again. We're going to want to start using this as a magma storage pit, and we're going to want to take all the magma that's out of here, or well, a bunch of it anyway, so we've got some room, and start dumping it in that pit. That means these doors have to be replaced. All right, we've got down here, we've repaired everything. There was uh, maybe a few damaged pipes because magma got left in there a bit long. Uh, that happened in between episodes, we're not going to cover that, but uh, we're going to slice back in here and we are going to go across here with some mesh tiles so that we can drop off lava in this section. I think that looks just about right. Now we just need some magma and thankfully, <laughs> thankfully we have lots and lots of it over here to draw upon. I think we'll just cut in through here and start pulling all this stuff out. Oh, that obsidian is going to be annoying, but we could work around this and rip the whole lot of well, not the whole lot of it. We're going to be limited in how much magma we can uh, dump in here. Uh, at some point, we'll start using this also to store it. But for now, we're going to be limited to just that section. And we want to take out the crucial bit, which is this stuff right here, which gives us more room for building. I think the plan will be we'll just build out ladders all the way across here. And we'll stop right about there. Then we can start putting down pitcher pumps or maybe a little bit before. That will allow us to, to get what we want. However... Bit of a problem here. It turns out our duplicates can walk out across here and get at these segments. We, do, we don't want them swimming in magma. We've done that way, way, way too often already. So instead, I think what we'll do is we'll block off that section with a, just a good old-fashioned mesh tile. That will allow the magma through, but at the same time stop our duplicates running through and doing something stupid. Well, okay, it won't stop them from doing something stupid. It'll just reduce the odds of them doing something stupid by, uh, by hopefully a decent margin. Finally, our first pitcher pump with 11 tons of magma available. You know what that means? Enable auto bottle, copy paste settings. Uh, actually, let's reduce those to a level three. Do you want people uh, putting other things on the long finger that might be more important? And now that's in place, let's just stick in a second one, shall we? You guys can reach across there right and dig that out. Come on, you're good duplicates. I was initially going to come down here for this, but uh, I changed my mind when I thought, oh yeah, those those duplicates are going to be running with bottles of boiling hot magma, and I don't really want them running through our uh, our this liquid super coolant pool. They'll if they drop a bottle, they'll flash it to steam in it, or well, super coolant steam, whatever that is. And uh, at the same time, it would affect our cooling solution. They'd be dumping heat into it, so I thought this was just saner. Uh, and right now, that's looking like. Yep, it, it's looking like red rain. Blood rain is going on over there. That's um, perfect. Now, each duplicate can only hold a maximum of 800 kilos. However, that's assuming that there's any free pumps. Each pump can, uh, each bottle emptier can only spit out 200 kilos at a time. So if there was four free bottle emptiers, they'll bring along 800 kilos per run. However, it gets all confusing with multi multiple ones of them doing it. But yeah, there we go. 400 on that one. And Sinatra got 800. They'll figure it out. Actually, should we put another pump? Yeah, why not? Can't hurt. Oh, and we also have to break out that uh, that magma pocket there. Well, I think we've gone just about as far as we're going to go with those pumps. I think the next plan is going to be rather simple. We're going to dig down here and just sort of dig out the uh, obsidian. That'll drop the magma some more. And once it's down a bit, we can finally start extending our rocket silo. I feel like our duplicate team should get an award for all of the dangerous labor they've been doing. They've been working on some of the most inhospitable planets in the weirdest circumstances, and none of them have, you know... Okay, they've messed up a little bit here and there, but no more than any other duplicate. Uh, pity they don't have, uh, you know, some sort of special medal we could give them. But 
It's fine, it's fine. We've uh, managed to get down to this point. We're going to stick in a couple of pitcher pumps down here to help even out this segment, segment. but I think we're good. Then we can just sort of plop these uh, across here to drain the rest of it as we go. But I think I want to get this side down a little bit more just to even it out. We'll probably put in some bricks at the bottom as well to even it up. Don't think we're going to fit a nuclear reactor down on, uh, on this side. Not after we move the rocket down a tad. I think, I think that's enough of that. I think it's time we started moving this. Uh, yeah. We're just basically going to put another row of doors down here and then somehow leave those doors there? Oh. You know what, I'll figure it out as we go. First things first, we're going to put in a nice insulated layer of tiles down here. The doors are going to be going along this line, so... Yeah, we'll give ourselves at least a double layering. There is going to be an awful lot of pressure behind this magma in spots, so better safe than sorry. Also, I'd prefer not to drop any more building materials down here. We've got most of it back, but it's not perfect. I think we have what should work. This is going to be the liquid rocket port loader. This is going to be what loads the liquid niobium onto our rocket. Uh, our rocket, you know what, let's... Uh, Build ourselves a rad bolt engine to see what we're dealing with here. Then at the same time, we had to extend this down. Now to extend this all the way down, we, we gotta be really careful. If we pop that open, magma's just gonna flood in here and cause us horrible problems. However, I think I have an idea. If we dig that out there, the uh, magma pressure should just destroy that insulated tile for us. It'll take it a while though, and in that time, we can close the door. Uh, give me an animation wire made of steel. There we go. And once that door is locked, all the ma that means we have basically successfully moved it down two tiles. We'll have to do a quick trial run to make sure it works, but I think... Well, it turns out these insulated tiles are incredibly tough. There is no pressure damage on that tile at all. We're going to have to, well, do something that's not that risky. I've sealed this at the top, so realistically all that should happen is the magma will flow in here. And then we can just pump it right back out of it when the time comes. Also, it's going to heat up our uh, our mechanized airlocks, which, you know, it's good. That needed to be done at some point anyway. And so we can get in there and get rid of that. And then we can even sweep, sweep up some of the junk that's in here. Though, let's give that a minute. Anyone that walks through there carrying anything has a tendency to cause it to uh, evaporate. It's just, it's only tiny amounts of the stuff in here. So let's not carry any hot debris through there just yet. I think we'll make an alternative entrance. And let me think. It's just every time our duplicants were walking through this thin pool of supercoolant, they used to cause it to evaporate when they were carrying hot stuff. This way we just, uh, we, we avoid that little inconvenience. Uh, everyone's getting rid of all the junk that's in there. We'll leave in the igneous rock. That stuff will melt again the moment we uh, get some hot magma in there. And I think we are done. Perfect. We can seal in the top of that again. And now we can pump it all back out again. Done. Oh, also, that can't pump while those doors are open. That's going to be interesting. And there we go. Uh, what was the last one we had? This one here, I believe. Yeah, that one there. I can close those doors. And one final one. How high are you going to go up? Because I'm pretty sure we maybe... Ooh. Yeah, it went up pretty far. That's fine. Hey, we'll have to do one quick test run here to make sure that this uh, is all working as intended. All right, let's do this. I move these doors a little bit to the side to help us out. Uh, you can be open, actually. By moving those doors over one tile, we should hopefully not have any magma end up over there, but I well, suppose we'll find out as we test it. Uh, plan is quite simple. We are going to open these doors. Okay, that should make all the magma fall down. Don't be too high, don't be too high. That's perfect. I think we've got just about everything. Rocket is supposed to come in and land after the rocket comes in and land. Seriously, Magma, you're going to keep doing that? Okay, fine. Keep doing that. That's that's grand. Okay, Magma is done. You're done? Then, once Magma is done, doors close. These would then, of course, close, then open to make a gas seal or to make a vacuum seal. Then down here, top doors close. Perfect. Then it should just be a case of... Wait, wait, let me change the set. Check the sensor settings. Sensors are set to two seconds. That is good. We will start closing the doors. Oh, and these doors over here are, yeah, definitely open. In fact, we'll open these as well. Done. And then we'll close those. And that should push 
just a ginormous amount of magma up there. It takes a long time before the pressure gets up there, but I'm hoping that will actually help pop those uh, igneous rocks. There's eight tons of igneous rock there, and we really would like if that turned right back into magna. And yeah, that's growing back up again. So we'll close that door too. Open up the top door. And should fill it over the top and start covering over our silo again. I might want to get rid of that and maybe get rid of these. Or not, I'm not sure. I kind of like the look of them actually, ha look of them being there. It makes it look more random. Eh. So it works. Perfect. And we have a liquid rocket port loader, though. How we're going to get the niobium in there, that's a bit trickier. I think we're going to want to head to a test map for that, because I don't want to try this on a live save for some reason, because I think all the screaming and the burning and the duplicates dying would be a bad thing. To test this out, we've come to our own little test planet, and we've got ourselves a niobium volcano that's going to erupt in about 6.5 cycles. It's not quite as nasty as our one, but it should give us a good idea of what's going to come out of it. Now, I'm thinking we're going to... Ha oh. Let me try and show my reasoning. Our volcano is about to erupt. We've got eight seconds left on that sucker. Now, the weird thing about these is just how much mass comes out of them. And as well as that, this niobium, if it forms a tile at about uh, 30 kilos. So 30 kilos of mass comes out of this and you, f and you solidify it, it'll just form a tile, which means you usually would end up plugging the volcano. So you have to let it flow freely and find some other way of dealing with it. In this instance, we're gonna try a pump. So once this hits about 100 kilos, which Dear Lord, the amount of liquid that can do that. There we go. It started pumping. And we're basically doing what we did with liquid magma. We're just filtering out the uh, visco gel to go back down. And the rest of the liquid niobium gets filtered out to go into a rocket. Perfect. That stuff is toasty. We did lose a little bit of temperature along the way. But to be expected. Jeez, are you finished yet? Seriously. Stop, stop overachieving. And this one is actually a weak one. All we have to do is make sure is we have enough liquid here or enough space here to hold all the liquid. If it goes up to two tiles, we're going to be in trouble. According to the wiki, this forms a second tile once it hits 3,870 kilos. So, quick way to test, I suppose, would just be, I don't know, sample you. Uh, let's make you 4,000 kilos. Paint you in. And we should look at that. 3,870. 3, That's exactly what the wiki said. And just to make perfectly certain. Yeah. Nice. So then all we'll have to do is work out exactly how big of a trough we're going to need, and then we have to make sure that we... Why are you... Stop vibrating. You're not allowed to erupt again. Why are you doing that now? Stop. We just need to make sure that we can get all of this liquid niobium out of there, or the majority of it. It is a little bit viscous, but I think we should be safe. We should be able to pull most of it out. I'm just going to fast forward time a bit and see how much of this we can get into the rocket. Well, that works surprisingly well. Uh, we've still got a bunch of niobium behind, but it's not as bad as I thought. We can always extend this on a tile if... on the real design. Uh, at the same time... yeah, we got 7.7 cycles left. Our one's going to be a little bit nastier, but I think we can do it. The thing is, we need to then fly the rocket back home, unload the rocket, and then bring it back again. So we've still got travel time to worry about, which is going to be about 2.2 days, so about 4.4 days. I think we should be able to manage this. It's going to be a little bit tight, though. Ooh, I really should have tested with a ladder in the way as well. Eh, we'll have to worry about that later, I suppose. Now, let's see, where are we going to put this? We need to make this uh, nice and neat. Also, you'll notice this gives out an awful lot more magma. Let me do a little bit of math here. This will produce almost six full tiles of niobium. So I think we'll go with, yeah, we'll give ourselves seven tiles to work with. If we give ourselves a seven tile catchment area, it should work just fine. And uh, the trick is, where do we put it without interrupting duplicate flow? We're going to have duplicates walking up and down here. I wonder if we'll get scalded. Hmm. I suppose we'll find out as we go, won't we? I think this should reasonably work, though we are going to have to make it, well, we can't activate this today. The problem is we're going to need a bunch of insulated pipes. I would like insulated pipes made of insulation. Uh, we should be able to produce enough of that back home. Uh, let's check our resources. Yeah, that started to crack as well, so I reinforced it. Hmm. It's still holding. All right, where were we? Uh, yes. If we go over to our molecular forge, and we have two and a half tons of isoresin. Where's the rest of the isoresin? I thought I shipped over a bunch more. With all of this isoresin, we can produce 42 insulated pipes. That should be more than sufficient for our needs, actually. Though, how much reed fibre are we going to need for that? 854 reed fibre. Well, 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 well. What do you know? Uh, we did actually produce a little bit more reed fibre along the way. I uh, expanded the farm because I figured we were going to be specking into a lot of insulation. 
did did not realize how little I had actually produced. I thought with the fertilizer and everything, we would have actually had an awful lot more, but no, uh, turns out we're not. All right, let's uh, put to ourselves together some insulated pipes. I think we can start with 99 and see where we go from there. That should get us started at least. At the same time, all that's going on, uh, if we check back here on Watato, yeah, they're, they're making progress. They're making progress and consuming the ocean, though calorie-wise, it's only 28 million so far. I mean, that's, that's still a lot of calories. I mean, mass-wise, where is it? That is, there's 28 million calories, and that is 17.7 .7 tons of bristleberry. That's a lot of tons of food that will just about fit in a storage container. Yeah, one of these bins. Yeah, they can hold 20 tons. These things can, refrigerators can only hold 100 kilos. So 170 fridges worth of bristleberry. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to call that pretty decent. The crazy thing is, though, our home planet over here has 38 million calories banked up just because of the sheer power of exuberant foodstuffs. We have all these exuberant wheat, uh, some exuberant, exuberant pepper, ah, pepper, pinch of pepper plants, and then a bunch of exuberant bristle blossoms. And it's just, yeah, so much food. At the same time, we're still accumulating barbecue because we've got a whole bunch of these going on, these shovels. And, oh, at the same time, we have, do have a couple of farms. So it's not like we're not producing, we're, we're just producing so much more food here, and this planet is not even dedicated to it. It's kind of, um... That's kind of scary, because a whole planet dedicated to it can't keep up with it. Anyway, where was I? We'll just have to fill in a few bits and pieces here, namely because uh, it was making travel through here quite difficult that we didn't have these pumps in. But we won't be using those for a while, reason being our uh, our side storage is a little bit full right now. We'll, we'll, we'll drain it slowly but surely, but yeah, it's going to be a while before we can drain any more magma out of here. Okay, I am totally out of time today. Uh, problem is, it just took way too long to get half of this stuff done. It seems working at high temperatures is it's always a little bit slower than usual projects. But, uh, oh, where is it? Yes, and on Modilius, in the interim, in the background there, we uh, we throw in together this little tungsten volcano tamer. It's uh, basically a variant on this one over here, except we chucked it down to one steam turbine. There was no need for the two over there, especially when you're using active cooling, it's not a problem. So over here, it's just same thing again, but we put in the jumbo batteries, or we put in the batteries in here in the steam room, so they're self-cooled. There's no need to run any cooling loops to keep them cool or put them in a layer of anything. It sort of simplified things, though, uh, well, if you can call these things sort of simplified. But it's working out. 7.1c on those, on the tungsten there, and that one's about 10.5. Simple, easy, efficient. Anyway, I'm going to cut that out there. I I think next episode we should hopefully get this all sorted. The hard part is going to be the automation of this. What I want to happen is, I want all the niobium to get sucked up, dumped into the rocket, and then when this is dry, it automatically launches the rocket, where it unloads on the other end, and then the rocket automatically flies back. I'm not sure that's going to be possible, though. Hmm. Also, we've got to do all the, the, the door automations will have to be stuck in so it lands. And then what even rocket type do you use? Because if we put in a nuclear rocket in here, it's going to leave nuclear fallout behind and we'll have to pump out the nuclear fallout. Otherwise, it'll just keep accumulating. Or it will start exchanging heat with a magma and cooling it down. And then we've got to worry about the other end and the same thing. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's going to be possible. It's going to take a lot of playing around, but we'll see what we can come up with. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.